Hello and welcome back to the Metropole Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we are currently playing in the casual lobby of Jinteki on that, playing this, um... Uh, this is an off-the-grid Gagarin deck, and it's actually been pretty fun. Uh, we are playing against Edward Kim, played by someone named Quetzal, which isn't confusing. And it's actually pretty late at night right now. Recording this one? Uh, yeah, maybe. So, yeah, we got the smooth lights on. That's pretty nice. And we're just trying to get some games out, because I kind of goofed the weekend's recordings and we lost them. Uh, we have two pieces of ice, and we don't know what Edward Kim is going to do, I imagine. That's what like, have fun. I imagine there's going to be a lot of pressure on centrals. We're actually not running that many operations. Uh, I think maybe only like four. Oh, six. Some of them are really important. Six to seven. So I think we want to get this out early just because that's good early. And we can actually ice up each uh, each central server. Um, I don't know what's harder for Anarchs to break right now. Like if they're playing Yogg, Enigma's five to break. And if they're playing Paperclip, this is only three. Regardless, I think we want to put this on... R&D, because I imagine they're going to run that the most, and this one actually is pretty taxing. Now we can put an end around on HQ and only res it if we need to, which is if they siphon us or do like a really powerful turn. Um, so let's see how this goes. I haven't played against Quetzal. Uh, sorry, this is Quetzal, their name, but I haven't played against uh, Edward's Hammer in a while. Edward ruined me at Canadian Nationals. Uh, Alex rebirthed into Edward Kim, and now the nightmare is kind of... They're always there, right? Like, you can't... Anyways... Uh, so let's see what happens. Salsa slums on the table and scrubbers, so they're prepared for this nonsense. They're gonna pay a credit though, and like there's nothing they can trash for two. They're, I guess they're assuming it's a sensies, and that is kind of a problem. Salsa slums and scrubber, considering we are playing off the grid and chrysium grid. So good luck us. Uh, I think we can still res this just because it's gonna cost them five to trash, and they're currently at three. We can also protect it. Oh, that's not good. We probably want a Russian agenda. They're down to one credit, we can rush an agenda. Rushing both of these are good. The only problem with rushing corporate sales team is that we don't have enough money to res the ice behind it as well. We are gonna make HQ a, a one and two if we put both of these pieces of ice down, but they'll probably be distracted by this remote and or this pad campaign. And getting pressure off centrals is really good with Edward Kim and with us all at slums. So let's see what they do here. This card actually, if they want to trash it, it'll cost them six credits to trash because they spent one for the access and then uh, it's going to be two more and then, f I mean, four more to trash and one more to access. So that's actually pretty good. The beauty about this card is that you can afford to spend four credits resing this piece of ice. There's a chance they will face plant this and then just run centrals and we can lose the corporate sales team. Uh, mm, what can you really do? But they're just clicking for credits. So our pad campaign technically is uh, credit neutral. And they probably have a breaker in hand if they're just clicking for credits. Like something like a Faust seems good. So I think we're just going to score that. Next turn we can consider double icing it and like pushing for the sales team. Because I don't actually mind if they access HQ as long as we get the sales team out of there. But let's see how this goes. They also have to respect things like hard hitting news, right? Like that thing that they did turn one is kind of a mistake. Because if we had a consulting visit or just a hard hitting news in hand, if we were playing more of a kill deck, we would have thrown the book at them. Because they ran and ended their turn with one credit. That's a huge mistake. Okay. So. If we put this on here, this is five plus four, which is nine, which means that we don't have enough money to res everything, but like it'll kind of, it'll kind of be a bluff. No matter what, they're gonna have to spend four. If they put down a Faust and run through it, we can afford to res both, which is good, but we can't score. So I think we can actually just rush. I get this problem where I build these decks, and actually this is probably something worth running. Oh fuck, we can't afford both of these. I did the math wrong. Um. Okay, we're good. Um. Another agenda. That's actually maybe okay. So let's score this just so we get the money up. There's a chance they might be running vamp or something really annoying, which is good that we get this out just so that if they do start siphoning us or what have you, we are prepared for it. But sorry, the thing I was trying to say, and this is kind of a problem when you're trying to showcase off like certain cool decks that you're building, but this is really important to understand when you're playing Netrunner, is that when you build one of these cool decks that you're really pleased about a certain like card interaction or wow, it'd be really cool if we got this up, you have to understand always that every point of the game like independently evaluate your board state and like if we were kind of i would say closed-minded and tunneled and said like oh this is an off the grid uh chrisium grid breaker bay grid deck and uh all we want to do is draw that combo and score in the server like we wouldn't have had four points now and that's important like you just kind of you do have to see the board state at all times and uh just like if you can win the game 
win the game. It doesn't matter what cards you put in your deck. Sometimes you just need to do the thing that your deck doesn't do. Or not showcase why your deck is so cool. So, Mimic Island Table is not going to do anything against Ichi. No one expects Ichi. No one expects Ichi. They can always click through it, so if they put Faust down or like a paperclip, and they didn't throw away any breaker yet, they can maybe contest the server. If we over advance this, this list gives us an access to the winning agenda, which might be good. So I'm tempted to over advance this. Even if this like slightly ambitious play doesn't go through, because um, they could just vamp us and run that. Oh, I guess we have Enigma for that. But even if this doesn't go through, like we're only giving them one agenda point, and in the end, that's not like we're up four points. Well, we'll be up two points at that time. But like, I think this risk is worth it. So they're running this remote server. If we res this piece of ice, they'll have to click through it, which is going to rob them most of their turn. And I think that's fine. Uh, even if we res this, we'll be down to one credit. Four breakers would be nice, to be honest. They help. Not so much for this one. They do have a link, so they don't actually have to click through the trace. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We're not going to boost it. So they're going to keep going, which could be a mistake, but we're just going to res this and end the run. Um, and the thing is, like, with the pad campaign and with the corporate sales team, we could actually consider just scoring this and not over-advancing it. Uh, this server actually is seeming kind of secure. It kind of is, unless they throw out a paperclip right now. And they just threw out a deja vu. So, do we score this or not? I don't know. I'm tempted to put this on R&D just so they put pressure on another server. We can go for this. Uh, let's see if we're being greedy here. Because if they want to Faust this, they have to run, play Faust, run, click, click, throw out three cards. That's actually possible. It seems like with all this sort of economy, they might actually just be running standard breakers. But I think Mimic is good regardless. Uh, maybe we are getting greedy and we just want to score this. Oh, wait. We have three credits. Okay. Wow, well, that that uh solved that problem. And if we basically if they do not get and we get another good piece of ice on here, uh we can basically pull out an Oaktown renovation and kind of just plug it in and go nuts. If we are running hostile takeover, we could just score from hand and win, but we're not for some reason. Uh, I think because it doesn't make sense with the off the grid deck and you don't want to give them you basically giving them bad pub and Gagarin it's one of the worst things you can do. Uh, we do have a beginning of the off the grid combo, which is kind of sweet. I think we might want to do that just for fun. Uh, just to slow them down, right? Like we'll only have to pay four for the whole thing and I think we can afford to do that. So let's put this on HQ. Let's put this on a new remote and put, oops, nope. Like if we get this up, we're super safe. And even if they like blow all their money getting into the server, whatever, whatever. So I'm like super confident that if this goes through, like if they can't put down a breaker this turn, they kind of want it. They're drawing really mad, bad, like really hard. They seem to have insane anarch problems. And Cipher's on the table, so they're going to instant parasite something. And if they can instant double parasite this server, off the grid is not going to matter. Glad I had three servers. I'm um, actually off the grid will matter because they can't actually run, launch a run on this remote, so they can't actually sit for things. So I think we actually have something pretty beautiful here. So like, yeah, check this out. Server two, credit, credit. And then on our turn, we res Baker break grid and we res off the grid and now they can't run this server. So they're basically going to have to run this. If this fires, it's going to like end the run. I mean, it's going to end the run and they'll lose a click. Then they have to install a parasite and trash crazy and run again and then charge the server. So, like, automatically, this is going to goof them up. Like, this is... I think we just won right there. And Daily Castle on the table, and we're just going to score this out. And that's kind of the game. Wow. Good game. So, that's... uh, Thanks for it. So, that kind of shows what this deck can do. Uh, and this combo actually seems kind of reasonable. Because uh, we only pay one credit for this, and we are running, just to show you what we are running. Let me move my camera one cool second. Yeah, we are running three uh, of these guys, three uh, friends in high places. <laughs> we have, like, I think we have seven operations. 
So the idea is that we are running friends in high places, and that actually seems kind of good right now because at any point in time, if you need to rebuild this like f off the grid Chrisium thing, you play one friends in high places, and you bring back the Chrisium grid on HQ, you bring back the off the grid, and then you're kind of good to go. And you basically only have to protect HQ, and you actually don't really have to build that compelling of a scoring remote. You just have to make sure it doesn't get instant parasited, so don't put Bailiff on it. And that's kind of cool. Um, the reason, again, why I'm playing this is somebody played this in HB. And I wanted to test it in Wayland just to see how... So it, when we do play it in HB, we realize, oh, yeah, it's so much better here. Because it arguably is. Um, considering money is not that good. And, and HB money is a lot better. Um, yeah, that's that. This deck is actually kind of fun. Uh, I'm kind of enjoying it. And I know they didn't run much, but like the idea was pretty sound. And I think we could have done well regardless of whether they had breakers. That's a ridiculous sentence. Um, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Stay tuned. Uh, probably by the time this is coming up, uh, probably like 12 hours from then, I'm going to be live streaming. So check it out if you can. 845 Eastern. Uh, I I think I have to say this because I get a lot of comments. All the deck lists of all the decks that I play are always in the description of the video. So if you ever want to try something out, if you want to just look at it and like give comments and be like, hey, Andre, why didn't you play uh, Taurus or something like that? Uh, it's always there. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned every weekday night and streaming on Thursday. Ciao. Oh, hey there. Thanks so much.